Nick Saban said recently that he thought playing LSU, Auburn, and Tennessee was a bit much. Josh Heupel retorted when asked about the Tennessee-Alabama rivalry. He said that's something that's very important to our fans, and we want to keep that. At this point, as of April 2023, who cares more about their program, Nick Saban or Josh Heupel? Wow. While you're thinking, let me lay out some of the parameters. Alabama's done a lot for Nick Saban. Nick Saban's done a lot for Alabama. Josh Heupel, I think, is a long-term coach. But do we ever really know? No. Florida didn't think Steve Spurrier was going to step away in 2001. So with those parameters... What would you argue? Who cares more? Not about what they do in 2023, 2024, 2025, but the long-term health of the program. Smoky Mountain Red already saying Saban is very comfortable and nearing retirement. So, Caleb, what say you? Because Saban has been an orchestrated guy. I think he was orchestrated in what he said about the permanent opponents. I don't think Josh Heupel is necessarily orchestrated. I think he wants to play Alabama. I think it's a recruiting sales pitch, and he knows that Nick Saban's close to retirement. Who cares more about the long-term health of their program? I think I would have to say at this point, based on the evidence, it's right now Nick Saban. And I say that in this way. Nick Saban's a little more focused on recruiting than Josh Heupel is. Josh Heupel is more of a schematics coach, which is fine. That's fine, but a schematic when a schematic coach leaves – you don't leave the cupboard as stocked as you do if you're a recruiting coach like Saban. The other point is it's really hard to argue against Nick Saban's. This guy's got six national titles at Alabama and he's still coaching like he's hungry for his first. I mean, I want to know what's, and I respect it. What is in somebody that makes them so successful? And Saban talks about this all the time. The human nature is to uh, survive, not thrive, which is whenever we reach a goal of something, we, it's natural for us to rest on that goal in our laurels. And he's got this thing in his head where he's never satisfied. And I mean, he's like the only thing better than six national championships is seven. The only thing better than seven is eight. And I wonder what is in a person or a coach that makes them that way. And I, I can't, and maybe it is about him personally, but Alabama certainly benefiting from it. Like I, you know, the phrase we're going to win so much. You're going to get sick of winning. It's like Saban doesn't get sick of winning. Well, I, I think it's I think it's Josh Heupel cares more about the long term success of the program. I think Nick Saban, as he proved by coaching at LSU and then one of LSU's fiercest rivals, Alabama, that he is what most coaches are, and that's a mercenary, right? I could be proven wrong tomorrow. Josh Heupel could bolt like Lane Kiffin, but he's fooled me. And I wouldn't have said the same about Butch Jones. I think Butch Jones, had he been successful at Tennessee, would have looked for another job. I think that Jeremy Pruitt, it's hard to say. Uh, I think Derek Dooley would have – man, with those guys, there was just no upside. So I don't think that they would have looked for another job. But I think Butch Jones would have. I think all those guys would have. I don't think there was any tie to Tennessee. For instance, if Georgia came open, Derek Dooley would have gone to Georgia. Had he had success at Tennessee because his dad coached there. Um, you can say the same thing for Clemson, where he was a wide receiver. So you could Virginia, say that – Virginia. Or Virginia, excuse me. You could say that Nick Saban now maybe has some loyalty to Alabama because of the ties over time. Listen, these guys, they show up and it's it's a job for the most part. I really believe, and I could be proven wrong, and I sound like the ultimate homer here. I believe Josh Heupel is the – is the exception of the rule. I think he loves Tennessee. I think he wants to be at Tennessee. Travis asking about Oklahoma. I don't think he goes there unless there's a massive administration change. And we, we've discussed that before because he was run off from there. But that's I, the point. Hypo, it, ta- it would take an administrative change. Administrative change. There's nothing that would get Saban to leave Alabama at this point. But he almost left for Texas just about 10 years ago. I think he flirted with it. I think he flirted with it for a contract. I don't think he was ever serious. I think he was flirting with it is enough for me to hold that against you. 
Same thing with Rick Barnes in UCLA, to be honest with you. Well, Rick Barnes admitted he'd have taken the UCLA job if it wasn't for the money Tennessee offered. I mean, he straight up said it. Um, I don't think Saban had any intention of going to Texas. I think that was a Mike Gundy move. You know how Mike Gundy always flirts with Tennessee when an opening comes and he does it to negotiate a contract raise at Oklahoma State? It's like there's a bat phone from Tennessee's athletic director office to Mike Gundy's office. (laughs) Oh, it's Mike. Hey, Mike. How's it going? And then he, he he might do it. He'll be a man and he's, and it'll be, I'm a man. I'm 60. And, um, what I'll say with LSU though, we know this, you know, this, I know this largely from you, but other sources I've read too. Saban did not like Louisiana. He hated Louisiana. Yeah. He hated being there. So if he were still at Louisiana, I would say he, the hype more loyal to Tennessee. I think he genuinely likes Alabama and and, and so that's that's where I would say kind of the difference is. See, I don't think Nick Saban cares what happens to Alabama the year after he retires. I think Josh Heupel cares what happens to Tennessee in the next five to ten years because he plans on being the coach at Tennessee. What if a Saban protege takes over Alabama? You don't think he likes you don't think he's happy when his proteges are successful because that's another feather in his legacy? Caleb, his protégés are like Jeremy Pruitt. Also I mean, Kirby pro- Smart. Well, Kirby. I, but Kirby's, Jimbo Fisher has a national title. I give you Jimbo Fisher. I like Mel Tucker, too. But I don't. His coaching trees, all successful coaching trees have failures. I mean, Bear Bryant had a lot of failures from his coaching tree. I, I think this. I think if Texas called tomorrow and said Steve showed up with a couple of pops in him this morning at practice. And we need you, Nick Saban. We're going to pay you $20 million a year. I think he'd entertain it. Okay, but okay. You don't think Hypo would entertain $20 million? Who wouldn't entertain $20 million a year? I, there's part of me that I don't think he would. I, and it, maybe I'm being, I know it sounds homerish. I know it sounds naive and stupid, but there's part of me that he, he realizes he got kicked at the curb in Oklahoma. He had to go the UCF route. He had to work his way up. I think he is more appreciative for his success now. And no, I don't think he would bolt as quickly as Saban. I so really what don't. This? What about instead of loyalty to the programs, loyalty to the athletic director? Do you think with Josh Heifel, it's about loyalty to Danny White? Because Danny White gave him his first head coaching job at UCF. And by the way, I don't know if you remember, that was a very highly criticized head coaching hire when Danny White yes. did that. And – then Danny White brought with him, brought him with him to Tennessee. Again, a criticized coaching hire. Do you think it's possible Heupel's loyal to Danny White? Loyal to Danny White, but I think Danny White wants to be the next commissioner of the SEC. I mean, I, gosh, he would be brilliant. I know you and I disagree. I think Greg Sankey's riding a wave. I think anybody could be a commissioner of that product <laughs> at this point. Yeah, I don't know yet. Well, he did. A, he added Texas and Oklahoma. So you have to get that. That's his Wait, leg. No, Texas and Oklahoma reached out to him. Who's going to say no to that move? That wasn't a genius stroke. Yeah, a stroke I, don't of know, genius. Man. I don't know. That's risky bringing those teams in. No, it's not. It's not it's risky to bring risky. Texas and Oklahoma. <laughs> well, I, that that is going to be his legacy is expansion. OK, so Slive's legacy was cleaning up the conference. Um, Kramer's oh, legacy was was, was the BCS. So. That's a pretty good legacy to bring in Texas and Oklahoma, whether or not they called or not. Yeah, okay, but this is, I say this about Roger Goodell all the time because people are like, look at how much the NFL's exploded in popularity under Roger Goodell. No, Roger Goodell just oversaw that, but you and I could have overseen the NFL exploding in popularity. It's, it's like being an oil executive. When you can sell oil, you're going to get rich because that's an easy part, unless you're Jimmy Haslam who manages to bankrupt it. But unless you're Jimmy Haslam, if you have oil, you make money. <laughs> and so... It's the same with like being the commissioner of the SEC or the commissioner of the NFL. I told you, it's a massive indictment against Greg Sankey that the Big Ten got a contract, a TV contract worth more than twice as much as the SEC when the SEC brand is so much better than the Big Ten's. Bassey Lawn and Garden Man Alive, it's worth driving Cleveland. Whether you're in Knoxville, Nashville, or Chattanooga, they have the industrial and commercial mowers to fortify your fleet or build a brand new one. They've got commercial mowers as well. Toro, count on it. Bassey Lawn and Garden, 
man alive, it's worth the drive. Austin says, hype fell in love with the University of Tennessee. It started with the Ole Miss game. You could tell in his voice in the post game. That was when I knew we had him. Austin, I am the guy that will tell you that every coach is a mercenary and would leave in a heartbeat, but I agree with you. Could I be naive? Could he leave tomorrow? Yes. Could I be foolish? And Are some people going to say that I'm a homer? Yes. But I don't get a check from the University of Tennessee. I'm telling you what I honestly think, and I think he honestly wants to be at Tennessee until his mid-50s or beyond, and he's 47-ish. Let me contradict Austin just a little bit. And you're right. Hypel backing the fans after that whole throwing stuff on the field incident resonated well with Tennessee fans. But I can tell you this. Had Lane Kiffin been coaching at Tennessee and he's the ultimate mercenary, he also would have backed the fans even more vociferously. Lane Kiffin would have told them to bring more golf balls in the next the next week. <laughs> That's true. But are you questioning whether or not Hypel though, is genuine? I think Hypel No, I think Hypel is genuine. I think Hypel is genuine. I'm just saying – I. I, I even think Heibel to a degree. Look, I think if Oklahoma clean house with its staff and cut ties with Bob Stoops, Heibel would consider going back to Oklahoma. I think Heibel takes it personally what happened with Oklahoma, and I think, and we all know, look, he he was set up to fail. He was he had an offense forced on him that he didn't want to run, and he still managed to average forty points a game, and he still got fired at the end. It was embarrassing what Bob Stoops did, and I, I think that relationship is irreparable because of that. I think it's irreparable but you're saying that he would at least take the phone call. If Stoops was gone and Oklahoma needed the coach, and they're going to with Brent Venables being a complete goofball as a head coach, you're telling me that he would take the phone call? I think if Stoops is there, he might take the phone call and he'd say, hey, you want me to cut ties with Stoops? Get rid of everything that ever had to do with Bob Stoops, and then I'll come. Ouch. Yes. I hope he's not that vindictive, because being vindictive like that can cause you to make bad life decisions. Being vindictive like that is why Josh Heupel ran up the score of Missouri last year. That's different than moving your whole family <laughs> out west and going to another school. I mean, that's, I mean, that's a little different. I mean, there. Look at Michael Jordan. He took everything personally. Now it, it it worked against him because I think I think I don't know how you feel. I think Michael Jordan retired early out of loyalty to Phil and vindictiveness to Jerry Krause, and I think he right. actually regret, regrets that to the end of his. He's going to regret that to the end of his life retiring early. Ninety-eight. Mr. Jones says Hypel ex- exudes genuine. You can tell he cares about what he is doing. And Hype would never stoop. I see what you did there, Mr. Jones. Um, Hype would never stoop that low. You guys are so like, oh my God, my coach is of great character and nobody else is. Well, you know, I'm not like that. And I don't <laughs> you're not. Because every time that uh, Caleb goes into the British accent, that means that we're... <laughs> It's going to be condescending <laughs> to our listeners and watchers. He oh, loves you. I have the most amazing coach. The oh. character, the character of the coach is so important in the integrity. Well, then I will tell you that things that Josh Heupel has done that I don't necessarily agree with, like running off players nowadays. I think he's done that with some of the quarterbacks. Um, but no, I think he, I think if he were, if God stepped down right now, and said, I can guarantee you that you'll have a successful career, but you have to sign a lifetime contract with the University of Tennessee. I think he would do it. Possibly. I think that's, I think he's happy where he is. I think it was a destination job from day one, and it always bugged the ever-living heck out of me that people said it wasn't a destination job, that it was a stepping stone job. Sorry, that's South Carolina. That's Mississippi State. <laughs> that ain't Tennessee. Wait, wait, I got to respond to Travis because he said he's coming at me because he says they they all can't be Brian Kelly. Okay. Nice. Character wise, Brian Kelly's a bigger snake. I also, Brian Kelly is a snake. Okay. Like character wise, I have nothing positive to say. Do put on a fake Louisiana accent his first day in LSU. Well, and he danced for that prospect and he it was embarrassing. that and he may have been a part of killing a young man. But other than that. Wait, what? I didn't even know that story. Oh yeah, he was up on. He was filming practice and high wind. Oh yeah, that's right. The Notre Dame. Pra- yes, yeah. that's right. I'm not his, here to defend Brian. His Kelly. family hasn't forgotten that. I'm not here to defend Brian Kelly's character. I'm just saying Brian Kelly is a good X's and O's coach, and an X's and O's coach at LSU is a dangerous combination because LSU has. They have not been run by the best and the brightest of the last thirty years. Rebecca <laughs> saying, "I don't believe he wouldn't even think about." Going back to Oklahoma, you can totally tell his passion in interviews. He's the real deal. I, I agree. Uh, and and listen, 
Um, I know that these guys are mostly mercenaries, but I believe uh, what Rebecca's saying. I believe Josh Heupel. And we'll leave it with this. Rebecca also said, Caleb, you're killing me. 